Hi, so in my last video, I visited the slow-mo guys and oof. This one, right? Yeah! A ton of things went wrong, but we captured what we wanted, so today I analyze. There are a ton of things you can't see, but we can observe at 1.75 million frames per second. Like, how quickly will Elon Musk ruin Twitter? Oh, hopefully not. I still like it more than Facebook. But the most important thing is that this video is sponsored by Brilliant! Start learning for free through interactive courses from the link in the description now! More at the end! So we filmed both my Tesla coil and Marx generator. But there are so many good data on the Tesla arcs that I'll leave the Marx generator arcs out of this video. Although there are so many good data on that one too that at some point I want to rebel this flimsy piece of junk. Okay, we'll start at a what, 100,000 frames a second? <laughs> That's the starting point. That's the starting point for <laughs> okay. this one. Yeah. The arcs from this Tesla coil are created in pulses of resonance frequency. This is the control signal, but as the coil is a resonance circuit, in every period the output voltage rises a bit, so high the air breaks down, ionizes and becomes conductive and current flows through it. Then when the control signal stops, like a swing that keeps swinging for a while, the high voltage swings many times before dying out. That's why you see the brightness rises at the beginning and then goes down, lingering around in a smoldering ionized channel for a longer period of time, of microseconds. Just look at the details. Boom. Not enough frames, is there? 100,000 frames a second is too slow. One of those frames is barely enough to capture our supreme leader's brain activity. But here's how the arcs like to distribute into the air. The top load and the needle have the same charge, more concentrated on the small surface of the needle and much more at the tip and charges want to get away from each other. So they jump out of the tip, going in all directions, but not back towards their same kind. So this area is where the arcs can be, as we also see from the slow-mo videos. Well, unless there's a ground which bends this area towards itself. I'll just do it. Okay. Let's look at the arc jumping to Dan's hand. Okay. <laughs> and not just to enjoy the torture, now the arc is more motivated to jump to ground. But let's adjust the image brightness. See, the arcs are distributing in the air, touching every corner of where they can go. This is something you don't see in the original brightness. But now you see an entire fluff of electricity pouring around. There is a lot of missing data between these two frames. But here the fluff has found its target and in the next frame the proper path is established and such low resistance direct path pulls the entire energy through itself and sucks all other branches dry. Same as how a flood of water carves channels into the soil, but eventually one of those channels becomes so large and low resistance against water that the entire water runs through it, sucking all other channels dry. Kind of like how all the movements are now united behind the strong women of Iran fighting years of human rights violations and injustice. Everyone is rooting for you. You will do it. So now what I want you to do is to have a screwdriver and point it to the arc. Oh, ah, oh, you it's, feel it? Like, ah, it's getting me in like a little bit. <laughs> what I'd like to know is that if the arcs jump from the Tesla coil to the screwdriver or they appear from both sides and meet at the center. See, I think because you have a large voltage difference between two points, you should see arcs flying both ways until they meet at the center and BAM! The path closes in one arc. Oh! Ah! <laughs> oh. oh yeah, there. there Whoa. We it looks like it's jumping from the Tesla side and turns off here. Let's enhance. And there, we already see the path is not dead yet. Starting over, now we can see more fluff. Frame by frame, arcs start going from Tesla coil. Next frame, we have a lot going already, which means we are slow. 
While in normal brightness we don't see much, in adjusted image we can see the fluff has expanded a lot and there is a weak arc at the screwdriver side. Next frame, through the fluff, a strong path is established which in the next frame sucks all the other branches dry until the pulse is over and the channel starts to fade. That was, that a, was crazy a beautiful one. one. Okay, let's wow. look at this frame by frame. One frame. Look <gasps> at that. What's it doing? It's wow. still not made completely. It's so going it's, through many We're paths. actually seeing it come from the screwdriver now. So all this air oh, yeah. is connecting these like micro arcs. Yeah. They're not fully formed. And then they're and then, accumulating at the screwdriver. Yeah. And you can see the main arc working its way through all this. Oh, they oh. meet in the middle. Oh, wow. That is so cool. I feel like some go, sort of go. like X-Man or something, you know, with like powers. <laughs> In the long distance gaps, the secondary arcs become stronger. And sometimes it just doesn't make it that far. I, I never thought that starting at 100,000 frames a second would be too wimpy of a speed. Yeah, uh, what can we do? 1.75 million? Is that the maximum? Yeah. Is that the best you can give That's me? That's the best we can do. How you got? <laughs> I like jumping from 100,000 to 1.75. Should, really? should, we, should we do it to 500 first? I kind of want to see what that looks like. Yeah, we could waste time at 500 if you want. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We now have a very long and skinny resolution, 1280 by 128, but we are at 456,000 frames a second. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, go. Now we're ready. Now at four and a half times the frame rate, we can see more and less. Yes, we get more frames, but at the same time, they will be darker due to much faster shutter speed. So those dim fluff won't show up. We also raise the pulse rate frequency and we see a bit of a different story. At higher pulse rate, the ionized channel doesn't fully collapse before the next pulse arrives. So we see electricity finds that lower resistance path and pulses through it. But since the path was off for a short while and has lost its lowest resistance, tiny branches get the chance to push outwards in different directions before the main one rebuilds itself. But eventually there is enough current back in the main path that pushes it back open and tiny branches die. The path changes with every arc a bit because the air heats up and moves. And there is some randomness in how the arc has to find its old path to connect. So you see, the arcs try to jump the shortest path at the beginning for the first arc. But as the ionized channel moves around, the shortest path isn't the lowest resistance path anymore but it is the ionized path from before, which may have moved to a much longer path. Hmm. At this frame rate, we also see some significant blinking, which is showing me maybe we can actually see the resonance frequency. See, the arc appears, goes dark, comes back on, goes dark again. I know my Tesla coil resonance is around 250 kilohertz, and we need at least double any frequency to sample it properly. Otherwise, we'll end up with an incorrect picture of the signal. So you sample a lot and process those samples properly, or else people will put you away. So why don't we, why don't we make the leap? 1.75 million. Just straight up to 1.75. Why not? Skipping a mil. <laughs> Skip a mil. We've done a mil before. We've yes. never done 1.75 million on, on a Phantom before. That's true. And you're here for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So that's... I didn't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> and now, running at the fastest frame rate, we see significant blinking. This is the resonance frequency of the Tesla coil at work. And since we are sampling way faster than it, we can actually film its value. One, two, three, four. So it seems there are four frames between the peaks of brightness, which is one period. Calculating frequency with rough accuracy, because we have limited samples, we get 440 kilohertz? What happened to 250 kilohertz? Well, I was expecting it closer to 250 kilohertz, but... Well, maybe... So it's broken. Or maybe we are still missing something. <laughs> oh no, it is right, sorry. I have to divide it by two as well. See, the brightest spots happen at the peaks of power, not period of voltage. Power is voltage times current, with its peaks happening at twice the voltage frequency. So we have to divide the 440 kHz by two to get 220 kHz. 
which is close enough to 250 kilohertz. Well, we've confirmed it too. The air can blink at 250 kilohertz. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> well, my question was, would the arc jump one way or both ways? And the answer is not both ways. And I think I know why. See, the Tesla coil potentials are not floating, but are connected to earth. And so is the air around the coil. When the high voltage starts going, the ground side doesn't see a voltage difference to the air around it. But the Tesla side sees voltage difference and starts breaking through air molecules charging them. And eventually, when the ionized charged air is too close to the ground, the ground charges will see a great pull from those charges and will push the opposing charges out. And that's when you might see a small arc jumping from the ground to the charges trying to bridge the gap. And when the gap is bridged, BAM! But I feel like if the circuit was floating in space, the arcs would jump both ways. These slow-mo videos really help me understand. Or as I like to say, this video is sponsored by Brilliant! It's the best place to learn math, computing and science through interactive courses and quizzes. It's like playing a game with many levels to achieve through which you actually pick up life skills. Like for example, logic. You read the question and pick up your answers and... I need to work on my logic. There are thousands of lessons at Brilliant with an exclusive new content added every month. Material from basic levels all the way to college and university. Stuff even I don't know yet and can benefit from. You know there are a ton of knowledge we need to learn and improve. And I already have my membership, so it's your turn to visit brilliant.org slash electroboom or click on the link in the description and start for free. And the first 200 of you can get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Then you can just have fun learning on your phone or your computer at your own convenience anything you want. And this is the one thing you can do anywhere, even at work and no one can tell you anything. You just tell them, uh, I'm taking some much needed training man, go away. And thank you for watching.